Hi, my name is David Mortimer. I'm the Executive Sales Engineer for Dan Falstrys. Today I want to give you a brief demo on what's called condition-based monitoring, which is a new technology released by Dan Falstrys. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. Condition-based monitoring is going to check the performance of a motor on a machine 24-7. We will monitor three functions. One, we will look for shorts in the stator, so we will monitor stator. Number two, we will look for misalignment or bad bearings, and we will measure vibration. Number three, we will actually measure the actual load envelope itself. How the process works is when the drive completes a startup, we consider that a perfect world. The drive will take what's called a baseline. It's like a snapshot in time. So from there on out, the drive will always measure itself against a perfect day. So after the drive startup, we will do exactly two baselines. A baseline is going to take a reading of the motor during operation so it knows what actually to compare it to. One, we have a standard baseline. It ramps up from zero to full speed and then back down. There's actually, the drive will be determined 20 separate points that it will stop, take a reading, and then accelerate. This takes about anywhere from one to four minutes and it's programmable by the user. The second baseline is called an online baseline. This one will go anywhere from 30 minutes up to six months. Reason being is that, example, if I have a pump in a process, I cannot necessarily just hit a go button and ramp it up to full speed. So over time, that pump is going to hit those 20 different points. Now also, on a normal baseline, we can hit 20 points. Each point we stop, we hold it, we move on. If I'm in a real application and a real process, I cannot necessarily guarantee that I'm going to hit my exact number on that 20 different speed points. So for an online baseline, I can make a variation of 2 to 5% in speed. That way I have a window and I'm guaranteed to be a little bit more accurate. As an example, I'm going to run a standard baseline. One, by hitting my menu key twice, it puts me into my main menu. By hitting the arrow up, I will come to my three groups, 45, 46, and 47, which are my condition-based monitoring groups. So here, I'm going to come into group 45 and hit the OK button. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up the settings for my standard baseline. And it's really quite simple. We come to baseline settings, which is kind of self-explanatory. Now, as you recall, there was two different baselines. There was the online, and then, as I call, the standard baseline. I'll hit the OK button, hit the arrow up for a baseline run, and then hit OK. Going down to my next, this is a read-only screen. This will tell me, one, my baseline did not start, two, if I go during my baseline, I come in here, it'll show me that I'm in progress, and then three, It'll just tell me when the baseline's done, but hey, we'll know that anyway because the motor will stop spinning. Here, I can see the percentage of my baseline from 0 to 100%, gone from nothing to completion. Here's my duration. Since I'm doing a standard baseline, we can do it up to 4 minutes. I'm going to keep it at 1 minute just to be simple. Now, the baseline needs to know the window of operation that it's going to take its 20 points. It's simple. It's a minimum and maximum speed. So here, I just had the minimum at 100 RPMs. My maximum speed is at 1500 RPMs. Now, I can manually enter the 20 speed points, but I'm going to actually let the technology of the drive determine those speed points on its own. So, we have everything set. I'm going to go to my main screen, hit my hand, and allow the base run to go. This will take approximately one minute.
Now the baseline is completed. From here on out, this time, this is considered the perfect world. Startup successful, now the customer will move on and forever monitoring the vibration, the windings, and the load envelope. Now, just do a quick look. I'm going to go back into my group and just scale down a little bit. And you'll see that things are pretty much the same way, um, no matter if I'm going with a standard baseline or if I'm going to go with an online baseline. Here, I've completed it. My only other change that I would make here is instead of making it one minute, I would make it days, weeks, or months for my uh, online baseline. There's just two other methods that I want to show you how you can do a baseline. Matter of fact, with the next two methods that I'm going to show you, you can do everything through your phone, you can do everything through your PC, or as you saw previously, you had your LCP keypad. The great thing about Danfoss is that we stay consistent with all of our menu structures. So, if I'm going to connect now to my wireless Wi-Fi keypad, I'm going to launch my program. If I come up and touch and go to my main menu, you'll see that all the menu functions on the Wi-Fi keypad app, which is free, all match up with what we saw on the keypad. So, if I would like to do a baseline through my Wi-Fi, I would simply go to group 45 as I did previously. I would go to 45-2, which was my, uh, my baseline settings. You can see I'm still set for one minute. From my last run, I was 100% complete, showing I finished. But here, I'm going to run a baseline again. I will confirm, and then I will put the drive in hand mode, which is where it has to be to do a baseline. Same process, it will ramp up, ramp down, it will hit those 20 points. While this is running, let's try to look at our status. Sixty percent. You can see my baseline is running. I'm still staying within my minimum speed of 100 to 1500 RPM. Here, if we go to 45 group again, here we can see the baseline is completed. The one thing I do want to show you, though is the speed points. I mentioned you had 20 speed points where you could either manually put them in. In this case, the, base run, the baseline run determined what speeds it took the readings at. So here I won't scroll through them all, but you can see 170 RPM, 240, 310. Okay, So we can manually do that. But again, this is what the drive saved for its baseline. There's just one more way that I want to show you how you can program the drive. Now we're not going to do another baseline here, but I simply want to show you the Windows based software. By opening up the MCT program, now that I'm connected to the drive, the drive scanned. And what I would like to show you is that we can do the same kind of programming right from our computer. And I want you to note also that all of these parameters of 45, 46, 1, 2, they all stay consistent. So whether I used my Wi-Fi keypad, whether I used my LCP display, or whether I'm doing it here on the computer, we program the same exact way. Matter of fact, if I take a drive 20 years ago, group 5 would be digital inputs. So we stay very consistent. So if I click on 45, which is where we did our baseline, and I click on 45.2, now you're going to see right here that everything is exactly the same.
etc. Here's all my speed points. Now these speed points are all recorded because they recorded these over the last baseline that we just did. There's my minimum and maximum speeds that I set up. Obviously there's no limit to the RPMs of the motors. And that will just about complete a brief introduction of doing the baseline on condition-based monitoring. Again, I'm David Mortimer, Executive Sales Engineer, Dan Falls Drives. Thank you. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Dan Foss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.